Now that we're in tools, you can see that you may have a variety of Blackboard tools available. I have administrator access, so mine may look a little bit different than yours. The two that you'll probably use the most are going to be either content collection or, if you see it, goals. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate content collection. What it basically is, is it is a place where you can store some files um, kind of as a repository inside the course without having it be available. I'll create a folder, call this Andy's Grade Book Backup. And maybe that's what that's going to be, is just a place where I keep some screenshots of my grades in case anything were to go wrong at some point. So again, you'll notice that this isn't um, really a place that we're going to store or pull a lot of content from because the available space is only 50 megabytes for this. Again, you're better off to store your materials inside the course content um, in terms of the modules themselves or if you have cloud-based storage, you can store with your OneDrive or a Dropbox or a Google Drive. The other thing that you may or may not have, uh, depending on if you're an administrator or a dean or staff, depends on your level of access, is goals. These are going to be things that are going to be set forth by the college and your department. These are basically um, program goals. So there's really nothing in here for normal faculty to edit. It is possible that you'd be given an enterprise survey through here um, in terms of a course eval or something like that at some point. And then application authorization is something that um, faculty and staff will not have normal access to. So once again, you really won't find yourself working in tools all that often here. Um, it's very similar to the organizations tab that we looked at earlier. Um, you'll have limited time in that. I suppose to wrap this up, I would say that the bulk of your time where you'll be doing your work is going to be um, in your courses, messages, and activity streams. So I would encourage you to really dive in and look at those three um, particular tabs inside of Ultra because those are the ones that will give you probably your most uh, commonly used day in and day out activities. I hope that you found this series of tutorials useful and that it provides you with a good overview of base navigation in Ultra. If you have more questions about this, please feel free to visit us at the Faculty Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning.